this is the first installment of a new video series here on this channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the Animator's Challenge. Maybe a bit dramatic? This is the video series where I challenge myself and other animators to create a short piece of animation based on a provided snippet of sound. Sound can really transform a piece of animation and having it be the input that spark our imagination to begin with is a fun concept that is also extremely versatile. Now, I don't intend to create this sound myself as I would be too biased to create whatever I want to make. I want this to act as a loose brief and be the origin for the art that we make here. Luckily, my partner in crime and wife Jana will assist us here. She will source and create an interesting piece of sound for us. In this first episode, I'll be the only participant to take on this challenge. But for future ones, we can bring on some guests. Maybe other animators, YouTubers in animation perhaps. Who knows who will be up for it? Let me know in the comments who you think should join. Now let's hand things over to Jana and see what type of sound she creates for me. So hi everyone, nice to be here, I'm excited. So let's get started straight away and see what we can come up with. So I thought about dividing the sounds in two categories, like the ones that are very obvious, very literal, where you can straight away tell, okay, that's what it is. For example, a human voice or an animal or a vehicle maybe. And the other ones that are a bit more yeah, abstract and harder to pinpoint down what it is or where it comes from. And I thought it could be fun to either stick to only one category or take sounds from both and mix them, but that's something I want to keep in mind. The other thing is it should be something short. So Olaf and I agreed on doing a max five second edit so that he doesn't have to animate a full movie, but just a short sequence. So I'm gonna browse through Epidemic Sound now and see what sounds I can find, what inspires me, what sparks some ideas, and then I will take it from there. So yeah, let's jump right in. Dead men tell no tales. Okay, there's really so many options, so I think I just have to commit and download a bunch and then I'm gonna head over to DaVinci Resolve. That's the software I'm gonna use today for editing. I know there's probably a lot better sound editing softwares, but that's just the one that I know best from editing my YouTube videos. So yeah, I'm gonna head over there and then see what I can come up with. I thought it could be cool to include a spoken voice. So I browsed for that for quite some time. And then to set a mood, I combined it with a few low notes played on a piano. To add an additional element and to give it more dimension, I added some rattling metal sounds. And all together, this is what it sounds like. Dead men tell no tales. Alright, so I think my part is done here. I'm really happy with the outcome. I'm gonna send it over to Olaf now and then we can see what he comes up with and what he makes out of it. All right, the day has come. Jana has sent me the sound file and it's time for me to have a listen to this. You've already heard it, haven't you? All right. Dead men tell no tales. Oh, okay. Dead men tell no tales. Oh, wow, I like this a lot. Dead men tell no tales. That's awesome. I, I, I wasn't sure what to expect, to be honest, but this is like full of stories. She's had a dialogue. Okay, this is fun. Now, I can sort of straight away kind of picture a lot of scenarios where this might work. Um, it feels like a very pirate thing to say, so it straight away kind of falls into that direction. It does feel like we're in a, maybe in a room somewhere. It's uh, not a lot of echo or reverb, so kind of a tight space. It might be someone like unscrewing a bolt or a, yeah, there's a, a, a clear piece of metal being dropped at the end at least, so that's there. Um, I'm gonna have a little think and then I'm just gonna start sketching out some ideas and we'll see where it takes us. I have gotten a few ideas down. This first one here is exploring that pirate theme that first came to mind. Not overly sure, I'm so excited. 
I do like this one over here. I'm thinking that metal sounds could come from the guy removing parts of a machine or a robot laying on a table. As this is dialogue driven, I want to try to do some lip syncing. It's always a fun challenge in animation to do that. And with dead men tell no tales, I guess my character says, you know, that the information that the dead person once held is not going to be spread, so the secret is safe. And I want to be able to see the character's face as he speaks, obviously, to be able to do the lip syncing. So I think the angle with the character at the table, with the robot in front of him, will work well for this shot. I'm thinking as he is saying this line, he's throwing the piece he unscrewed from the robot that is laying in front of him across the room. And we can cut to another shot of it landing on the floor, revealing a hint of maybe a body laying there. A bit of a story crammed into it. What do you guys think? Leave a comment of what you would create for this sound in the comment section down below. I've made a very rough animatic cut together in After Effects so I can see it working with the audio. This will be the one I'm going for, so let's crack on. For 2D animation, you need to draw every change in movement as new frames. It can be a very time-consuming and challenging format to work in, but it is my absolute favorite. Drawing is always difficult, even after many years of practice. Of course, with more experience you do things better and more fluently, but it's still really hard and requires a ton of focus and problem-solving skills. But that really is what makes it fun and rewarding at the same time. getting quite clean lines for this one, I think. In the rough storyboard, I made the character a lot more grim looking than what he's now turned into. More alien looking with like, kind of bubbles coming off his head. But I think it fits better with just a normal human character like this. Maybe he's a bit more mean looking on the inside. I don't need to redraw every line for every frame. I separate the different subjects on different layers. The foreground robot will be a static single drawing, while the man here will move a bit. But also he will be split up into layers, as some poses will be held longer than others. His face will have the most animated frames, as we need to lip sync to the voice. But this foreground arm, for example, stays static most of the time. After getting some keyframes drawn out, I can smooth it out with in-between frames. Here I can use what's called onion skin. It allows me to see the before and after frames to know where I can draw my in-betweens. Check this out, we now have the general movement of the character done. He still needs to speak though, so the next step is to make his mouth say dead men tell no tales. It can help to record a video of yourself speaking it out to get a general idea of how the mouth shapes look, but I also find that just mimicking the shapes live as I'm drawing them is almost more useful. As it's important to hit specific characteristics of a mouth shape for a certain vocal sound, you kinda have to exaggerate it and the reference video might not capture those specific characteristics but any method to get some additional information is always useful. So you can mix the two and maybe have a mirror in front of you too. Here is the mouth shape for the letter O in No Tails. Okay, I think it's working okay now. Uh, I still need to add a piece of metal in his hand so that whatever he detaches from the robot he's holding in his hand and then throws away. Uh, but before we do that and slap any color onto this, I want to make sure that the second shot of the metal piece landing on the floor works well too, so we can see that in an edit. I think I will approach that slightly different though and create that in 3D instead. This is quite a simple setup I've created here. I have a floor laid out and then I have an animated piece of geometry flying into the shot and bouncing twice before coming to a stop. I'm able to import the sound into the timeline here so that I can animate to that. 
while listening to the sound of how the metal piece bounces off the floor, I modeled it into a shape that I imagine would make that kind of sound. One could animate the object with a simulation, like a rigid body one too, but then it would be harder to make it fit the sound perfectly. So sometimes just hand animating things is the most straightforward approach. I have now colored the character, which took a while to get done. I lit him from the right so that the light source might come from an open door or window behind him. I think it works well to separate him from the background a bit and also get some light shining on the robot on the table. The background I have kept quite simple here. I left the area behind him pretty blank with a wall and just some papers stuck to it. Then we have this bookshelf here that helps to break that up and create a vertical line through the composition, kind of on a third in from the left, and then he sits on the other third. I try to pay attention to how the eye would travel over the image, so kind of leading you in with different elements. You can always push those things more, but I'm quite happy with how this scene is dressed, not overly busy. These blurry foreground elements give the shot a bit more depth and dresses the frame a bit, which is always nice. I like how the light is hitting the piece he holds up, making that stand out from the background too. Now let's make the second shot match the look of this one. Now have a look at this, I animated the camera moving over the floor, following the metal piece as it bounces. In the first shot we have a static camera, but here I will need to make sure that the background covers a wider area than what we can just see from one frame, since the camera is moving. By creating a wider static camera in the 3D scene, which covers all the area the moving one looks at, I can paint my background in this view and then project that image back onto the geometry through that same angle. When then viewing the scene through the more zoomed in moving camera, we travel over 3D geometry that looks completely painted. Here I also let the same light source that we have in the first shot cut through the scene and illuminate parts of the body on the floor. I feel that helps to create a bit of drama. Added a bit of a zooming in camera motion to the first shot here in After Effects, I also always do some final color adjustments here in the end, making sure the background and the foreground are separated nicely and that we have a good color harmony in the shot. I think that wraps up the process of this animation. Let's see what Jana has to say about it. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Yes, I'm excited. You ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Dead men tell no tales. Dead men tell no tales. Okay, wow, this is so different and so cool. Like, 
so different from what I would have pictured, but it's amazing. What, what, it's, what, what did you have in mind when you were making the sound? Like, I saw more a scene in the night, someone digging a hole, a grave maybe, oh, right. burying something or someone, having more like this typical dark creature, evil guy. Okay, yeah. Um, and you have more this character that is like... Maybe you don't know that he's evil, so mm -hmm. it could be a, a scene out of a movie where at this point the audience doesn't even know that he has an evil plan. Yeah, and also the, the piece what he drops is so different from what the actual sound was. What is that? What do you get? I, yeah, was, I, mean, I, was, I was looking, like I tried to figure out what that was, but it feels like maybe a, a, a bolt or something being unscrewed. And then... Yeah, that's actually true. So like it's the bolt of a shovel, oh, right. like a foldable shovel. Uh -huh, okay. Like a super random sound <laughs> yeah, that I found. very random, yeah. <laughs> but I thought it could... Specific. Yeah, I thought that's a good challenge, you know, yeah, that yeah. you have something that you can't tell. And then the drop was actually a shovel oh, dropping yeah. and hitting the ground. But I mean, the, the piece of metal that I made is actually a flat piece. Yeah, so that's, kinda matches. that's true. That's actually... Uh, what it is, like a flat piece of metal mm. in the end, yeah? That's quite cool actually, that that sound is so distinct that you kind of create that sort of shape Yeah, that you it. can tell it's not a ball yeah. or like a... Yeah. So what, what did you think about the sound? Was it like something that excited you straight away or was it oh, hard yeah. to work with? No, I was I was quite uh, surprised how, how, how like interesting it was from uh -huh. the start. I was maybe picturing something more kind of random in a way, but then it was... It, it felt like it had stories straight uh -huh. away. So yeah, I was really psyched to start working on it. That's good, because I, I wasn't sure. I mean, if you create the sound, you obviously start creating pictures in your head and you have kind of a story, but then it's hard to tell if if, if that's the same for... For someone else. For someone else who doesn't... Yeah, uh, know the that's true. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Maybe you want to do the outro. Sure. So make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss any upcoming episodes. Also make sure to check out Olaf's Patreon page. There's a lot of really good content over there too. And yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.